Twitch stream, can you hear me? Are y'all out there? I'm gonna mute this because it's coming in through my headphone. Uh, what up, boys and girls, dudes? Uh, so we've got Justin coming in. Give me a uh, give me a thumbs up out there if you can hear me. I'm gonna scooch this comment section in. I bet for you it looks like double comment section. Um, bam, don't go raiding on them. Wait till after Kibash. Goodness, yes. So, Dork, thank you, my man, um, or, or my girl, my dude, uh, for, uh, the, the Alka-Seltzer. Um, and man, and for, for letting me know I come in then loud and clear. Kalina's in the room. Ah, uh, it's okay now, she says. Um, Kalina, what up? Thank you for, uh, being here every day with us. Your, uh, your, um... Uh, effort and commitment and sense of community is not going unnoticed. Um, who else we got out there? Um, Justin is on his way. Oh wow! Looking at looking at this Twitch stream now, there's like 1,400 of us. Maybe I'll pull this. I'll pull this. Here's what I'm gonna show y'all. Um, e Man Shoe in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Emmanuel Shoe. I gotta say, yesterday's stream was one of the coolest things I have ever seen. Um, how many people in this room saw Emmanuel's stream yesterday? I thought that was just unbelievable. Um, finally, someone put all of the kits together. I can't wait to see uh, how that thing ends up for you, uh, finished up. Um, it's alive. Oh, and look at this, look at this. In the flesh? Hey, ah, what's going on? We got gotcha. you. Bangarang. What up, Justin? Let me see if I can fix this here. Get this at a better angle. All right. I'm going to set my station up here, too. Thank you, everyone, for bearing with us through these uh, technical <laughs> difficulties. Justin uh, has come from his, his studio on the lot where they seem to have dropped internet right there. Um, yeah. But bang ring, we got them now. Oh, and they're they're the new shelves. Yeah. That, that, that Instagram's been it's been screaming about. <laughs> oh man, so sorry about that, guys. Oh man, so so we got Emmanuel Shoe in the room, Justin. Oh my God, he's one of my favorites. I mean, how amazing was that stream yesterday? It was really rad. It was really 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 cool. Yeah, I can't I can't wait to see how that how that all comes in. We've got um, Sava Zikovic says yo oh, justin how's, Sava. Your, how's your post thu depression that's a great question Sava. let's jump right in because you just got back from trojan horse huh i did i did um it was uh it was a rough one i think i'm still on a crazy crazy sleeping schedule but um we'll <laughs> see out. how that goes you know what i mean like it was just very very interesting for me uh thu this year was absolutely amazing i had such a great time I what, always do. What always is do. the what's the time difference? Is it twelve hours? Um, I think so. It's a decent one. Bam! Uh, e Man Shu has chimed in. I love your stuff! Exclamation point. And Kalina, oh. we got Kalina in the house, who's who's been with us for the whole ride, and she says everyone loves each other. LOL. Yeah. Cola. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yes, yeah, so a Tro Trojan horse, huh? That's like. Yeah. That's the, that's the epitome of it, huh? Oh. Man, uh, Tro the Tro yeah, the Trojan Horse Festival. For those of you that don't know, is probably one of the most unique um, art festival. Like I, it's it's you know not to sound cheesy or, or you know, but I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and quote uh, Andre and Scott Ross, the guys that run that stuff. Um, is uh, it's it's an experience. It, it is definitely a mixture of TED Talks meet. Burning Man. <laughs> See, have, have you been to Burning Man? No, I have not. But uh, it was funny. We were discussing that. Scott Ross and I were. Uh, I think we're going to try and get a large gathering of entertainment artists to go out there. I got such a uh, good idea. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do yeah. it. I'm down. Um, I love Burning Man. Anyone out on the uh, the Twitch stream been out to Burning Man? Uh, slash anyone been out to THU? Um, and, uh, and, and Sava... Viziv, Vizkovic, Zivkovic. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sava. I'm working on it. I'm just gonna call you Sava. Um, you can just make up whatever name you want for me. Um, says it's eight hours. They think it's eight hours. Eight, eight hours, hours time hours, difference. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so you're, you're just checking back in. He says, ha, 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 thank you. Thank you. I appreciate I appreciate the leniency. Having a, a last name like Boutte, people are butchering it left and right. <laughs> um, so, Justin, I want to talk um, a little bit about um, some of your most recent projects. I know that um, I know that you're you've just coming off Bright. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, for y'all that don't know about Bright, I'm going to throw the um, trailer link to it right in the stream right now. Bright is the new Netflix Will Smith um, extravaganza. Tell us a little bit about what you did on that. Um, so we were brought on through Studio ADI, which is an amazing, amazing studio. Um, for those of you guys that don't know, they're, they're the creative minds behind so many, so many things like uh, Aliens versus Predator, uh, you know, Aliens movies, Predators movies. Uh, they just do uh, amazing stuff. Um, uh, but yeah, so they uh, they hired Ironclad and a few of our artists to work on some concept designs for a lot of the creatures uh, that you saw in the trailer. So we, we were brought on to primarily do do some orcs and some prop design for that one, and it was uh, it was really interesting. The whole the whole concept behind Bright is literally like for those of you guys that are old school like you know tabletop RPG players. You know, it's literally like Shadowrun the movie. So it's like modern day cyberpunk, you know. Uh, well, Shadow One runs a little bit more cyberpunk. But it's like modern day meets fantasy. Like what would happen in today if not only did we have, you know, orcs and fairies and elves living amongst us today and they were in line buying iPads. You know, that's <laughs> that's kind of the whole stick of it, but... Um, and for y'all out there who also don't know what Ironclad is, Ironclad is Justin's studio that he uh, founded and is the creative director of. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so, Justin, you also are the the ZBrush World Champion. Did I did I get that right? <laughs> uh, two years ago. Two years ago. Two years the, ago. Then. Yeah, yeah. The current the current uh, uh, hard surface title holder is uh, my guy Furio Tedeschi. Mm -hmm. He is. Uh, an amazing, amazing sculptor. Bang! So, so I know um, in your office you've got the belt. The, uh, I do. The, the big, I do. The big. How how do you how does one get into that competition and and where is that? How does that work? Um, well, essentially, you uh, you I believe you can email and ask to be submitted uh, for the final choices through ZBrush, but don't quote me on that. Uh, I was approached by uh, the the wonderful people at Pixelogic to uh, compete uh, two years in a row. Thing. And that was uh, super fun. Um, I've I've since then kind of taken a break, um, and the new the new ZBrush Summit and the new Sculpt Off is about to happen. I believe next weekend, so there's about to be a new champion, a new belt holder. Uh, but I think after this one, I think I'm gonna try and come back. I'm gonna yeah. try and yeah. I Didn't think it. I I've been feeling the need to uh, to try and compete with some some of my uh, my favorite artists again. It was always fun to bring to bring it back in the game. Yeah, you know. Uh, you know, I, but you know, I gotta put this out there. Like, I I don't know why they won't let me do organic. I'm yeah. only I've been in the hard surface. I want to get the organic belt. They they it's it's now out on the scene, man. Someone's gonna hear this <laughs> and they're gonna they're gonna call that in. Um, well, I'm gonna slide in uh, your website here. Um, for okay. For anyone who does not know, Justin is um, quite a prolific creature designer. Is that how you describe yourself? Uh, I would say that that's that's a majority of what I do is creature design. Uh, I do do a little bit of, of prop design these days um, and costume design. Gotcha. Sweet. So, yeah. I mean, look at, looking around on your site, there are there are just so many rad designs here. And, and I, I know in your office, you also have now a 3D printer. Um, oh, yes. And what can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing with the printer? Um, with the printer, so... Um, a few years ago, I was uh, lucky enough to win a Pegasus, uh, Pegasus 3D printer, but now I've moved on to the uh, Form Labs, mm -hmm. and um, that one, the form, I have the Form 2, and I got to say that I'm super, super pleased and super happy with how e the ease of use that it has, and um, you know, I think I had like a failed print once or twice, but that was just basically because I wasn't uh, understanding how to position it properly, but the quality that you get out of those machines now is absolutely fantastic. And uh, I've been developing a lot of stuff for an IP personally um, that I'm going to try and put out here pretty soon. Uh, I've been working on it for like the last two years, you know, in my spare time, which is like zero spare time. <laughs> but um, 
it, you know, it, it's really great. There's something tangible about creating a character or a creature or a prop and then holding it in your hands 24 hours later. It's it's kind of surreal. Were you a big action figure guy as a kid? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Love love G.I. Joe, Transformers. I used yeah. to take them all apart. Like and oh, then really? put them put them together. Like the Transformers was always fun to take apart and put back together. Um and then my favorite thing to do with G.I. Joe's would be to like I, I oh yeah, I just realized at age eight I was kit bashing. No kidding. Matt, you were yeah. you were taking different pieces of, of, of G.I. G.I. Joe's and putting them together? Yeah, G.I. Joe's and putting them together and you know, like it'd be like, oh, I want the helmet of this one, but I like the, the guy that's got the knife on his chest. We're gonna put his torso on, and then you know, bang. That was always cool. Yeah, uh, I just realized that. <laughs> isn't that awesome? Well, well speaking <laughs> speaking of that, let's um let's jump in. Would you share your screen? We can let's keep talking. Oh yeah. But um but let's uh let's take a look at uh, what you got there. Right, so now, um I think you're gonna take us into ZBrush. Um, and everyone on the Twitch stream, um, if you don't know, please ask your questions. Um, the most fun part about this whole thing is that we can live interact with all of us here. Um, and as many of the people know who have been with us um, through this whole Kipash 3D festival, um, that's the fun of this. And so we can we can build a community here. And, and our my only goal and our goal here with Kipash 3D is to bring value to you guys and find out what it is that you want and um, find out how we can better bring that to you. Um, so please um, jump in here, ask Justin questions. This is um, this is a, a really cool opportunity to get to spend some time with um, someone so celebrated within the industry. Um, oh, give, give me just a second here. I, I, I'm using a different version of Skype. Oop. On, there's there's a there's a pretty dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's just sitting over there. Had to show the dog once, right? Yes, indeed. Got to get it. Um, um, so I'm using a different version of Skype. Okay. And I don't know if it's going to let me screen share here. Hang on. Technical difficulties. It's constantly, right? Maybe if you just describe what's happening on the screen. I could do that. <laughs> I just don't think we'd get very many yeah, viewers I, 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 that I agree. Way. I agree. We might, we might lose all our whole crowd here. Um, well, while we're, uh, while we're sorting this out, um, Let's uh, talk about some stuff. Who's got uh, yeah. Who's got something out there that they want uh, they want us to, to jam on? It'll take It'll take a minute. It'll take a minute. There's yeah, There's a, there's a lag on the Twitch stream. Gotcha, gotcha. Imagination says Dork 76. You mean You mean have some imagination, or shall we talk about imagination? I think that's a great. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> um. Well, what do you think the role of 3D printing is going to be in the future? What do you think? How do you think that's going to really influence society? Um, you know, I think it's it's definitely going to change a lot of things. Um, it's it's one of those things where I feel that uh, the the more it happens, the better it's going to get, and the more people that innovate. It's the better it's going to get. There's a, there was a lot of stuff in the beginning that was kind of happening with, um, you know, uh, where people were were fighting over patents of you know how the technology works and whatnot. And uh, I think that 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 hurt the innovation. Um, anytime that happens, it always it always hurts the innovation. Just like in VR, you know, VR is too young to have um, console only titles. Mm -hmm. That does that does nothing but hurt the industry. Um, Right, because you, so, yeah. you want things to be able to spread out and, and to be able to enjoy it on whatever headset you have. Exactly, um, exactly. Do you see that a lot with 3D printing, that, um, that things are, are only working for one, for one system and then you can't share it to others? Um, no, not really. I mean, the 3D printing, it, it's, always, it's more along the lines of, like, how, what's the quality do, do you want to get it at? You know? So that's primarily, I'd say you know, the major takeaway from that is like, what's the quality? What kind of files does it accept? What's the material that you're going to get? Most of the, most of the material, I, you know, I've seen, I've seen price hikes in the material that it takes, like the resin. Um, and I feel like that's going to be an issue later on, mm -hmm. but we'll see. Um, so ch checking in on, on the Skype issue, you think, um, we won't be able to screen share? Um, I don't know here. Give me, give me one second. You know what I'm going to do? So what I'm using is the in, uh, 
when you get Windows 10, that Skype comes with it, mm-hmm. and it's a part of it's a part of uh, the operating system. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to download the new, okay, like the actual Skype while we're talking. Okay, cool. I don't know why it doesn't let me screen share, but we'll see. Um, has anyone out there on the Twitch stream spent any time uh, working with 3D printers? Dork says, have an imagination helps. Um, yes. And uh, Kalina wants to know, are those plein airs on the top shelf? Are those what on the top shelf? Plein airs. Oh, no, no. Those are actually pictures of um, Ireland. Oh, score. Did you, did you take them? Um, I did not take them. I bought them when I went there. Uh, and I was lucky enough to go, those of you who know me, they know that, uh, I'm a huge Star Wars nerd, and, uh, okay, I was able to go to the, um, the island at the end of, uh, Force Awakens. Mm. It's a, it's not a matte painting, everybody. Don't tell Max. You, you know what, you know what's funny is, <laughs> um, Nick Hyatt, um, was on the show on Tuesday, and he was talking about that. Um, right, I think he, he did two Tuesdays in a row, so I think actually last Tuesday, if you want to go look it up, anyone... Um, he was talking about how he was supposed to paint that and he was like this set, you know, this, this landscape is so beautiful. There's, there's no need. Yeah. It's absolutely stunning and absolutely terrifying. It's like 800 steps straight up with no railing. And each one of these steps wobbles just a little bit to make you scared, Uh you know? Um, you know, and then, you know, also the instructor or not the instructor, but the, uh, the, the tour guides like, yeah, pay attention. Don't be taking selfies. There's areas where you can, you know, take photos because three people died last year from making from taking self selfies and falling backwards. God, death by selfie. That is that is the ultimate way to go today. Well, I think that's the <laughs> ultimate Darwin Award. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you we, know, we've all we've all looked looked at our into the black mirror long enough and and fallen off the cliff. Um, <laughs> dork ass is your three D printer. A- color or monochrome uh it is a monochrome it is not a color printer mm. um and sava says uh experience with th- that that he or she has experience with 3d printing um a couple of figures from our ifcc titles um and then has l- put some links in there uh let's Ooh, check, yeah let's check it out sava actually you know what let's check it out because i'm gonna i'm gonna disconnect from this, this and then, Skype call, and me then back. call you back call Perfect. you back all right bingo all right. So bangerang Sava, that's pretty rad. Um, man, we should uh, we should have you on the show. We should be talking about this. Uh, so what what kind of three D printer did you print it with? Um, oh, and I guess Justin's not on, so I don't need to read y'all's comments. You can read them. Um, but this is really really insane. I think I think three D printing is going to be huge for the future. You know, as we as we get to um, more and more entering virtual environments ourselves, and we can we can be printing whatever it is that we need. Uh, like Justin said, pretty cool seeing what you see in 3D live in front of you. Yeah, right. I mean, to be able to to take things from the virtual environment and then build actual tangible goods, I think, is going to be awesome. Um, Dork says, "Holy cow, that's gorgeous." Sava is a he, by the way, my man. You know, I don't want to uh, I don't want to make any any guesses here um but rad dude um kalina would love to see it colored that's a cool idea too maybe put out a put out a line of them what do you what are you going to do with this and, and how can you mass produce these you know does how hard is it to generate a bunch of these or a number of these that you could then um move or what is the cost per unit i guess yeah, you gave them away. Dope. Send us one, man. <laughs> uh, how about VR? Anyone out there uh, spending time in VR? Spend time using VR or working in VR? Uh, here's Justin. Let's jump him in on this. Yo. Yo. All uh, right. So... I can see you. I can see you. Let's see if we can screen share now. Bingo. Oh, is it working? Bangarang, we are in. Can y'all see that out there? 
Um, looks like we are good to go. Um, ah, awesome. sweet, dude. Okay, so now we are in ZBrush. Yep. And what I've done here is I've created a... Um, let me get my pin out here. Helps if I have that ready. You know, details. <laughs> All right. So what I've done here is I've taken the Gothic kit set and just started bashing uh, some tech pieces on top of it. Oh, sweet. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. I love what you've done here. Yeah, it's it's just kind of like setting up the scene and building out a vibe for one of my characters here in one in my uh, IP, and we'll let's zoom in here so everybody can see it. Man, it's almost unrecognizable the gothic pieces. Yeah, I just use those. So a lot of the stuff I use is is mostly just base bases or shapes to get things going, right? Yeah. Um, and sometimes I'll take pieces like a lot of this this upper pieces are. Um, engine parts and i'm just trying to get a uh, a different otherworldly vibe where it's like you know trying trying developing some tech shapes some style guides and stuff like that on on how this world works and then from there let me just go ahead and send this over to keyshot all right well, this is a good time to tell everyone while, um, while you're on the line here that we, um, courtesy of all the artists in the Kipash 3D Festival, we have put out um, coupon codes because the artists all said um, uh, that we, uh, we totally want to do this and it'd be awesome. Let's, let's give something to the audience while they're, while they're watching. So anyone who is watching this stream and wants to pick up a kit, um, you can get a 15% off discount code by typing in GOBI. 15, capital G-O-B-Y, 15, um, and you can snag a discount uh, from kitbash3d.com. So here you can kind of see it as it's rendering. Uh, you can kind of see the background of, of there's the gothic kit that I've just kind of bashed some pieces of. Oh, yeah, of totally. Yeah. Exactly, that, that classic archway. And then we'll spin this around here. a little slow on this one so right now um what i'm using right now is my mobile studio pro which is pretty good it, it chews through a lot of stuff and this is probably 20 million polys that's in this scene wow yeah that's why it's a little sticky a little sticky but you know what it, it, it really just chews through a lot of these things very very quickly and then what I'll do now is I'll I'll go ahead and try and let me see if I can get this camera to set up here. You can you can move that camera me out of the way too if you want. Oh yeah. I um I, I thought it was on my screen and I was trying to move it. Oh, were you? <laughs> yeah. Whoops. Um I just got a note. I said the coupon code wrong. It is 15 GOBY. G O B Y all caps. G O B Y 15 GOBY. Um and that that will get you in the Kipash the readycom store. All right. And then I'll just drop in here an environment. Dork says, looks slick, exclamation point. Kalina says, hard to tell it was the gothic kit. Um, <laughs> and Dork that's, says... That's the point. Right? Yeah, make, making, it, making it totally your own. And then Dork says, it's very Warhammer 40K. Nice. Nice. I like I'm hearing that. super down with that as well. Did you play Warhammer as a kid? Um, you know, I didn't because not a lot of my friends uh, could could get the pieces. So what I, I just had a really good time painting them and collecting them. Yeah. Um, but now uh, I'm we used to play this game called Necromunda back in the day. Uh -huh, totally. And they're getting ready to re-release that, and I'm super pumped. Uh, and I I literally bought like two kits already, so I'm ready to play. Um, it's been a long time since I've had any gaming going on, but I think this is the uh, the time to start getting going. Uh, we really want to start playing a lot of D and D in the office as well. I think that's that's a great idea. Um, I'd be I'd be down to jump in on a game myself. You're welcome anytime. 
Um, do uh, do y'all out there on the on the Twitch? Do y'all play? Uh, anyone ever play Warhammer or Dungeons and Dragons? Um, yeah, man, I was I was obsessed with Warhammer as a kid. Like like really just like looking at the the pieces. I used to get those big catalogs that they'd release and flip through, you know, and just like build my my army of elves in my head. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's one of those things where it's just like. It, they were too cool not to not to look at them and not to, you know, check them out. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab some textures in my texture file here. I have way too many, by the way. I really need to organize this stuff better. How long have you been building your texture library? Um, over the last five years, and it's it's kind of organized, but then I've totally gotten lazy. As you can see, like all the way down, I haven't organized any of this stuff. But some of the really cool stuff um, in Keyshot, which has always amazed me, is the ability to throw any texture I want on there, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, if I wanted this texture on this tile here, we can double-click there, and it'll just make it work. Is that something that you find with, with all models, or is this a unique thing? Um, it, it, it does it really well when the UVs are nice and clean. And I think that that's the beauty of all the pieces that you guys have created um, or, or put together, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, that was a big point for Max in the, in the process of this, was making sure all the textures were fully UV'd and tileable. Yeah. So this is, I mean, primarily how I go about starting most of my scenes let me see here. That's at a two. Let's raise that to an eight. And it should start to come in to where you can see a little bit of that going on. So we've got, we got Kalina, <clears throat> Kalina goes, do we really need that many gobies? 15 sounds like a lot. <laughs> um, and uh, she played Magic, Magic the Gathering. Uh, did, you, did you play Magic growing up? Uh, I am a, I still play Magic. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I love magic. <laughs> that game was awesome. Um, if she if she knows anything about the old school stuff, I have two full sets of Power Nine, and that's two Black Lotuses, <laughs> there you go. which are extremely rare. Man, I'm super proud of those. Um, have you been? Uh, you should talk to them about doing doing some characters for them. You know, I would love to. Um, I think I need to get so a lot of a lot of the art that I generate um, is one of those things where. You know, it's it's designed for production, so sometimes yeah. it's not like the most illustrative. Mm -hmm. It's more it's more about getting the point across, where it's like showing everything off, where you can see all the textures and everything. Right. And so yeah. that's what I'm used to. But I really want to get more into the figurative illustration, where it's you know really unique camera angles and and characters in motion. Um, Unfortunately, like that's just not what I w I've been doing for the last five years. It's more like just like here's a prop. This is what it looks like. Here's a character. This is what it looks like. You right. know, right? Very, um, very re rendered looks. Yeah. There, that game Hearthstone um, has done some really cool ads where they they illustrate and they do like some parallax on the illustrations as they move. I think that's a, a really cool way to do some personal work if you wanted to. Take, oh, some, definitely. You know, make some illustrations and then just give them a slight animation to sell the story. I think, you know, t talking about selling the story, I think this is really cool about what we're doing here, where you're such a big character guy. Um, mm -hmm. Being able to throw in an environment and build an environment quickly around, you know, your your main piece. Um, mm -hmm. Do you feel like that's so important to to sell the story, to really tell the whole thing that you're trying to achieve? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um it's it's also one of those things too where it sometimes I just don't have the time to create some of the shapes and the fact that all of these are kind of pre-built doorways. I mean, there's there's on, only so many doorway shapes you can create. I, I look at kit bashing as the ultimate mix-up um, in the terms of you know you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. You know, a piston is a piston, a shock is a shock. Um, you know, a cathedral wall is a cathedral wall. There's no reason to start that stuff from the beginning. Now, you can always take it and make it your own, but, you know, I, I think that it's one of those things where it's always interesting to see how people can take stuff to the next level and really mix it up. Mm. 
Um, Bien QP has jumped in our group chat here. He says, our group finished 5E, and we're trying out EOTE right now. Um, oh, nice. And uh, Ryan Design Live uh, asks, who is this? Uh, Ryan, this is Justin Gobi Fields. Um, and he is showing us some work in ZBrush with uh, the Kitbash 3D Gothic kit. Um, and speaking of the Gothic kit, um, right now we have a sample kit, which will give you um, several pieces. If you go online, you can download the sample kit for free. I'm going to give you several pieces of the Gothic kit, which you can then um, build your own piece. And we're having a, a contest right now through the end of the festival next week where anyone who builds a piece, um, builds something with the, the sample kit, can then post it using the hashtag KB3D contest. Um, and then the winner will be voted on by all of the artists who have been in the Kitbash 3D festival over the week. Um, and it's been awesome to see some of that work. Uh, we've been posting it on our, on our Instagram and Facebook. Um, have you, have you managed to see any of that stuff come across Justin? Um, I have, I really enjoyed, uh, watching Alex's, uh, cause his, his workflow is very similar to mine. Mm. Um, and so it's always neat to see how that happens. You know what I mean? Uh, and seeing how he he quickly turned out that the uh, I think the image with the girl and the mech yeah, yeah. Um, worked great you know he's using those the, I think it was the what what pack was that what um, was it uh, uh, he was Neo, using Neo Tokyo Neo Tokyo so um, ah, Justin, nice. Justin for for y'all who didn't catch it on Monday um, Justin's talking about Alex Fagini who is um, another conceptor and and character designer um, was shown in ZBrush um, and then he used a bridge over to key shot um, and then pulled it into Photoshop um, which is a similar workflow to, to your workflow right yes very very much so um, and I think it's it's so cool to see all the different pieces and ways that the people are going about using these things and the, the feedback from on, online has been really awesome yeah I it's it's really interesting to see how people are gonna be using these pieces and and mixing it up I mean I just just off the gothic kit that I've I've seen and, and played with you know um, I, I also have the Arabic kit, and I'm going to be playing with that as well to add to the scene. And I'll probably end up doing a, a timeline or a time lapse uh, from my workstation. My awesome. uh, my mobile studio pro seems to be having a little bit of a, of a problem uh, chewing through this high of a of a scene, but my uh, my Lenovo workstation is uh, is ridiculously powerful, so it usually just chews through everything. And that's that's the workstation in your office. Yeah. Yeah. So if, uh, if you're just joining in with us, um, Justin uh, has a, a fantastic office on one of the studio lots here, um, and their, their internet ran out right before we were supposed to start streaming. So he is now <laughs> in his home office um, yeah. where, he's, where he's cranking away. Yeah. Um, what kind of computer you got here? Um, so this one is the Mobile Studio Pro. It's, a, it's like a uh, laptop uh, tablet. Mm -hmm. It's done by uh, Wycombe, and it is, it's pretty awesome. I really dig mine. Um, it's pretty new. It's pr relatively new. I think they, it came out about six months ago, um, and I was uh, lucky enough to be on, like, the developer side of it, so that's kind of neat and fun to see. Sweet. Um, you know, some of, the, some of the companion issues that we were talking about and wanted to make sure that they were able to, um, I guess, fix, you know, like, I believe in the – in the the companions if you're familiar with it they had a a version that was a standalone computer and then a version just that just plugged into your computer and became a second screen and what they've done is they've put those two together so now i can i can go on the go show client work here but then also just plug it into my workstation here at at my house and it'll just be a cintiq yeah super rad Super rad. Uh, BNQP yeah. asks, um, do you guys uh, have an Eastern kit in the works? Um, if so, any ETA, pagodas, etc. cetera. Um, we, we've got a lot in the works, um, but we, we will be putting out information on new kits um, through our social and on our newsletter. Um, so please stay tuned. I love your questions, though. Um, uh, specifically about the kits, I think that's that's fantastic. I want I, I want y'all to anywhere in here throw ideas you have at us. Um, if there's a type of kit that that would really make a lot of sense for you, we want to know about that. 
um, for you guys out there who are using the sample kit or who have who have bought one of the the full kits um, tell us about it tell us what um, what you like give us your feedback we want to interact with y'all as much as we possibly can so let us know give us feedback shoot us an email our emails on the website um, and uh, and put it in Kalina says I might do a 3d experiment with the sample kit yeah Kalina for fun um, you have you've been along with us for the whole ride show us uh, show us some of your work get the sample kit and, uh, and throw something up there um, Ab- absolutely it's fun and it's free why not yeah I think the the, the main thing I love Nick Hyatt calls it the sandbox you know and I love yeah. I love just playing I think Nick Nick does such a an awesome job of that of I don't know how he, his his work rate because he's he's on like five different projects and then in the middle of the night the next day he'll just throw up a concept that he did just for fun because he had an idea in his head <laughs> <laughs> that's the beauty of it you know that's the speed in which things can happen uh in in this world uh and especially with how it works all together in the industry mm-hmm. you know time time is money and Sometimes it's more about the, you know, just getting the idea out than the ex- execution. Um, I'm not knocking anything uh, regarding that, but um, I think that it can it can definitely come into play to where a lot of people, I, like I remember early on in my career that, you know, when I just found out that, you know, it, that it was okay to kind of use photos for textures and and to bash things and paint over them because it's a production. It's not about doing it traditionally or doing a fine art. Like if you, if you were doing it that way, then of course, then it feels definitely like cheating. But being a concept artist, it's not not so much. It's definitely about the illustration, but it's more about like, can you visually tell your idea? Because if you can't tell your idea, then it's not a concept. Um, and one of one of the teachers that I I um, I listened to always used to say. You know, like show show me, uh, don't tell me. And if you're a concept artist, that's that's your job. That's if game. I can look at, yeah, if if I have questions about what it is, then I've kind of failed as a concept artist. So I'm trying to trying to show exactly everything that I can in an image and dictate it that way. But yeah, when you're doing client work, do you find that you have to turn stuff over every day? You got to show them something new every day. Um, you know, it all depends on the client. Uh, some do, some don't. Um, I prefer a little bit of time and breathing room to, to come up with creative solutions and not be under the gun so Mm -hmm. much. Um, I think that that's, that's where real creativity happens. But unfortunately, that also costs a lot more. Right. So, you know, I understand the need in the industry to be able to to crank out that many images. And early on in my career, I was doing maybe one uh, one to two every two days. You know, Um, on a good day, I could get two done in a day. Um, It it all depends on the concept and what they were doing. Um, I like to start out, especially with my doing my creatures. Mm -hmm. um, I like to start out doing uh head busts or uh creature busts um because if i'm that's the most important part for me in my opinion um that's what sells it and i always tell my students like look no one drew a picture of a boot for captain america and was like oh that's it let's make a movie you know what i mean like it's it's the head and shoulders and chest that, that i always focus on first everything else will fall into line relatively quickly um but yeah how did you get into that? How did you start? When did you start working in ZBrush, actually? Let's go with that. Um, I started working in ZBrush right after I had to uh, I had to leave Nomen because I couldn't afford to uh, go to school anymore. Um, it was just the cost of living in California was too high, mm-hmm. and I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't get a school loan um, due to my age. But uh, you know. I was lucky enough to score an internship at a local design studio and work under Jared Morans, and he pretty much taught me everything. Um, also, Jared Kravetsky, uh definitely taught me a lot of things. Kelton Cram, I learned from. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was it was essentially like working with ZBrush eight hours a day, sometimes ten hours a day, for about three months, and then you know I was just really comfortable in it. Yeah. 
did you when from those internships how did you segue that into being able to pay for yourself um you know <laughs> it was funny uh, essentially I was just told like yeah you should you should do freelance work on the side and I was like oh you you, you, you can, can do, do that. that yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know and then very quickly I was realizing that you know uh, I was getting paid more doing the freelance than it was during my day job and it was kind of a no-brainer to to kind of switch to over way. to just being yeah. freelance yeah how do you how did you market yourself or how do you market yourself um, you know in the freelance world how did you how did you go out and find new clients and and build new relationships um honestly i just instead of taking really crappy low paying jobs i would focus on building up my portfolio and uh doing personal work you know a, a lot of the attention that i got in the beginning was just just doing practice stuff putting it out there um you know at the time cg hub was the big thing mm-hmm um, and when it shut down, there was kind of a void and nobody kind of knew what to do. I mean, you could post on DeviantArt and, uh, you know, not to knock DeviantArt, it has its place. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's definitely gotten like unmoderated and a little bit out of control. Um, so nowadays I, I, I tend to stick to posting just on ArtStation. Yeah. I, you know, it's got, it's got the great community portal. Um, it has everything that I need to do. It, it has integration to social media. You know, like that's that's key for me, and that's key for any artist today. Is you know when you're posting something, it's such a pain in the ass to post it at nine different places or at every social media thing. Mm -hmm. And once you plug in all the pertinent data into ArtStation, it'll post for you. ArtStation, I think, has really nailed it as far as for for conceptors to to be a professional spot where they can also use it to cross platform. Oh man, yeah, Leo and his team, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Daniel, those guys really really nailed it with ArtStation and I'm really really excited for the what the future holds for them and uh, you know, it, it, when you, when it comes into perspective, you got to realize like I believe it's in the it's ranked in the top like 5000 sites on the internet. Yeah. The top 5000. Yeah. Like I know it. That's not that's not you know anything to to shake a stick at that's for sure that's pretty impressive I think the number um, is like 45 million unique visitors a month Yeah that's so insane mm -hmm. I don't I don't understand it you know um and I feel like you know right about the time that ArtStation come out came out there was a lot of success for it and then there was a lot of clones that tried to pop up and do the same thing mm -hmm. but I I don't think that they had the understanding or the outreach that ArtStation did, you know, like I remember when it when ArtStation first started, Leo literally came to my office and asked us, "What do young artists need? What do you need? What you know, like we're here to fulfill a gap." Yep. And I've never heard of any other site doing that, and I think that that's that speaks volumes. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah. Do Do y'all yeah. on the Twitch stream? Do y'all have uh, Art Stations? If you do, um. And you want to share them? Post them in the Twitch stream. Let's uh, let's see what what y'all are working on. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so in um, speaking of what what you're working on, um, are we just are we having too much of a lag here? Um, it. No, I think it's some of the textures aren't loading, and I'm not quite sure why it's not loading. Um, let me see if I press something. ZBrush is not feeling well. No, ZBrush is going fine. It's just the the key shot is not loading the textures like it should. But ah. relatively quickly. Essentially, what I'll do, guys, is just because of the technical difficulties, is um, I will stop developing this. You know, uh, as we as we speak, and then I will go to my workstation and I will record everything and give you guys a time lapse to show you my workflow. Uh, just just for Kit Bash, just for you guys. Cool, man. We will, um, yeah, totally. Yep. That'd be awesome. We'll put it out, um, and we we aim to we'll put out all of the videos from the festival, um, and we can include that in there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but y'all out there, uh, file file in any questions y'all have for Justin. Um, now's a now's a great opportunity. You have uh, you got an ear to bend. Um, what what kind of advice do you have, Justin, for for people who want to get in the game? You know, or, or who who are who are just getting kicked off, and they're they're trying to jump right in. What what do you what do you say to the people in that situation? 
Uh, don't don't worry about speed. Don't worry about how fast you're doing things. Uh, everybody learns at a different pace, and use man use the internet use use things like learn squared um mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of other you know websites you know like i i personally teach it at uh schoolism uh and that's a great function there's there's just so many great options out there to learn and to you know uh just absorb all the knowledge from professionals that are out there that are working um but also don't don't stray too far from foundation or at least the understanding of foundation, you know, like I, I, I do a little bit of drawing and a little bit of sketching, but I'm primarily, you know, in there sculpting um, and then painting on top of it. That's that's how I got into the industry. And that's kind of my workflow at this point. Um, and that with running a running a company, it's kind of hard for me to take time and get back into it. You know, I was just at THU. I was sitting there watching Carl Kapansky paint oils. And I was like, oh, my God, I want to paint oils. You know, like, uh, I just want to get back to traditional and um, not be rushed to complete a piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's an interesting balance <clears throat> between between speed and taste. You know, when you can combine the two, I think you get is where the real magic happens. Absolutely. Absolutely. Speed, speed, as ironic as it sounds, saying it out loud, speed comes with time. Mm -hmm. The more time you put into something, the faster you're going to get into it. And, you know, when when I just started into the industry, um, speed painting was a big thing. You know, it's kind of it's kind of taken a it, it's uh, it's kind of taken, a, you know, a, like a pause in how popular the, the speed painting stuff was. Um, but I feel that it led to a bigger and better hybrid art form, uh, which is, you know, like a 2D slash 3D pipeline. You know, being able to take what this image right here that I have rendered that has most of the work done for it, but then to punch it up and be able to understand how to add mood, value, lighting, um, texturing, and, and really building out that world, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, like, if I was going to paint on this screen right here, I'd literally just render this out, maybe one or two passes with different textures, and then I have this nice clean cutout right here to kind of throw in a matte painting and you know then you're done there's your shot you know um maybe add some more characters uh when i was originally sketching this out this morning of, of what i was going to do um i think i had like six or seven characters that i want to throw in here so that'll mm -hmm. be interesting to see um how that plays because i normally don't get an opportunity to put that many characters in a scene together um but yeah we'll see how that goes yeah, maybe uh, maybe we can we can do this again too. We Absolutely. Turn this thing back on. We got we had a couple questions. Um, BNQP says, um, "Wait, Justin, did you study with Carl Dobsky back in SF?" I wish. <laughs> I wish. I know Carl, um, and I've met him on several occasions. Um, those guys, the Safe House Altier guys, um, if I'm saying that right. Um, I think they're they're not in San Francisco anymore. They're actually here in LA, yeah, and it's very, so yeah. very, very enticing for me to you know try and take a month off of work and just go and learn how to paint. Um, well, at least attempt to learn. I don't think you can <laughs> learn how to paint oils in a month, but at least it would be fun to try. Beauty of of all these things is their their lifelong yeah. journeys. Um, oh, Chris Bohan's in the room. What up, man? He says um, early in your career. Um, when you did a painting every two days, did you ever deal with burnouts or how, how did you deal with burnouts? Oh, it was, it was bad. It was really, it was really hard to come home and do personal work or even try and do other freelance work. Um, yeah. and I also felt that I was jumping into a stagnant design sense mm. where it was just like, I was only using the pieces or the, the models that I had previously made and just altering them. I wasn't right. doing anything new. I, I, we weren't given time to build up an asset library. You know, um, one of the cool things that made me think of that, like, um, I think it was a, what talk was that? I think it was at Noman and there was a David, David Levy talk where he talked about early on in his career. I think it was with a freelance client or if it was a, for a video game client where, he had a hard time telling the client, like, listen, give me a week. You're not going to see anything in a week. But by the end of the, of the second week, 
you're going to have 30 paintings, mm -hmm. right? And what he was doing was, like, he was developing a shape language, sketching things out, building 3D assets, and then he could just crank out paintings. And that was the beginning of understanding to me, like, listen, the the way to go is a hybrid hybrid form of 2D to 3D for production. When you're learning, you know, it's I think it's important to do things from scratch and to build everything from scratch, but also... You know, it goes back to what I said earlier. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. Mm -hmm. It's for for me. It's more fun to just get in there and take pieces that were definitely not meant to be put together, put them together, and be like, <laughs> "Oh yeah, that's a cool shape." And then let me let me figure out what that is. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's that's exactly what Emmanuel Shu was talking about yesterday. Is is he he didn't look at the kits in terms of like one, th this kit belongs on its own. He looked at them as, in terms of shapes and what yeah. shape and how, how could he use these shapes to do something in his head, which is so... I think yeah. what you were, you were saying earlier too about like building the foundation, you know, not, not, not rushing through that part of the foundation before you get to build, you know, your, your key that'll, that'll influence everything you do for, in a project. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's, that's why I'm kind of in love with key, kit bashing. And it all goes back to, you know, that, that era in the 80s where people were making models, you know, uh, this way and uh, doing special effects. And that's going to be a really interesting time, especially in the near future. Yeah, I hear that. Spe speaking of, um, of burnout from, from Chris's question, um, mm -hmm. do you have any, do you have any rules or, or, or routines that you keep up to, you know, so many hours at the computer, you have to get so many hours of sleep or you got to go take a walk or do you, do you do anything like that to prevent, you know, to keep physically, um, going, you know, I think it's so hard. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's definitely, it's, it's called having three dogs. Ah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, it's like, you know, between that and me screaming at the computer because I'm not ranking up in Overwatch uh, or waiting for, <laughs> you know, Destiny 2 to be released on PC. That's that's the big thing right there. But no, um, honestly, I think it's really important to take breaks. I'm I'm a huge fan of uh, the cinema and I, I always have been. My first job was a projector uh, projectionist at a, at a local um uh, theater and I fell in love with the movie industry through at that at through that point and um, you know so much so that we'll see you know like I'm gonna I'm gonna see where the, what the future holds for me after I I finish this book for the IP I'm gonna try and shoot some some film for it I'm gonna get out there and, and just try different things and I think that that's the key is Get out there and try different things. Try using 3D. Try doing 2D. Try doing both. Um, try try using photo manipulation. Try using VFX in your work. You know, it, it it all pushes it forward. Yeah, yeah, right. Just finding finding a balance between um, working, you know, so much and and doing things for client work, and then taking time to do stuff for yourself. Yeah. Um, we got we got some comments. Uh, Chris goes, I can relate to screaming at the computer. <laughs> um and uh another chris says that's a lot of dogs um, that is a lot of dogs <laughs> cb says uh what kind of dogs question mark um so i have a pit bull a pit bull mix um and a basenji lab basenji lab wow cool mm -hmm. um well so so what do you think um what, what what's next for Justin Gobi Fields? What do you what's what's on your on your bucket list creatively and professionally that you have not yet uh, gotten to do? Oof. Well, you know, I I there's always franchises that are near and dear to my heart and I would love an opportunity to work on Star Wars or Star Trek. Um I'm a big sci-fi nerd. You know what I mean? Like, those are the fun ones for me. I would like to do more horror. Um, and I would like to do a little bit more costume design because that's always fun. Um, but in terms of, you know, like, outside of the current career mainframe that I'm in, hmm. I, I really think that, um, you know, as a company, as Ironclad goes forward, especially with more 3D printing technology becomes more and more affordable for small businesses, I think that, 
getting into the collectibles market would be really fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we would love to do more work for Sideshow. Um, Ironclad was given an opportunity to help with uh, a few of the statues that just recently came out on uh, Sideshow. This, the Thanos on the throne, that was a really great one to, to see worked on in the studio. Um, the Captain Marvel was really cool. Um, awesome. Yeah, it was really, really neat to see that process and see how those things are going. And that's that's one side, you know, being a, being an avid collector, I, I you know, I don't know if you can see on my shelf. You right. probably can't. But, you know, I've I'm you know, I've, I probably have about 30 hot toys and 20 statues from Sideshow in the office as it is. Um, I'm running out of room. I need a bigger house. <laughs> more shelves, more shelves. Yeah, more shelves. But the real the real one for me is uh, is directing. I want to direct. I really want to try and direct something um, because it just seems like a fun ride. I'm sure it's stressful, and it's always, always going to be, you know, from the outside looking in, it, I'm sure it it seems a little bit easier than I, than I, I already know that it's not that easy. But um, I'm one of those guys that really, really loves to collaborate and work in an environment, and that's one of the major reasons – that I started Ironclad Studios was so I could bring people in and and work with them and learn from them and hear their stories, see their see their tips, see their tricks, and then steal them all. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and then you know, but learn and grow as an artist. I think that that's really important to grow as an artist is to uh, immerse yourself into other cultures and other styles and travel. Travel more, guys. I cannot stress that enough. How much traveling has changed my not only my my perception of life, but my artistic ability. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Get, getting out, getting outside of the bubble. Yeah, step away from the computer from time to time. Well, we are we are button right up here to uh, to time with you, Justin. Um, okay. I, I can't thank you enough for for spending this time with us and 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 showing us a little bit. We look forward to seeing what what comes of this image. Um, anyone else, if you got some questions, it is a uh, perfect time to, uh, to get your last looks in there. Um, we, a reminder, we've got the um, sample kit contest going on right now. So um, if you haven't already, get your sample kit off kitbash3d.com and, um, and make something. Tag, uh, tag us as well as the hashtag KB3D contest. Um, and we'll feature it and we'll, we'll talk about it on this tour and we will uh, we'll get it rocking. Um, also, um, pick up a kit, uh, courtesy of Justin. Um, if you use the coupon code 15 Gobi, G O B Y all caps, um, you will get 15% off your entire order. We, uh, that coupon code will be good for another 20 minutes for the uh, entire, the entire library. Uh, yes. Yes. If you, if you guys you, are mad, you guys are mad. <laughs> so you got you got 15 <laughs> minutes you can you can get anything uh anything you want off the uh off your entire order so yeah if you want to get for it if you want to get the whole the whole library um you get 50 percent off it um and cb types it in there thanks cb um all right oh here we go dork justin what has been the most inspirational location um in your travels so far oh that's a that's a tough call each one is different for me. You know what I mean? Like it's not like a, mm, it's not a contest. But now that you have to tell me that it's a contest, uh, I gotta say, the, the first time, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Portugal because mm. Portugal was the first time that I was ever invited to go outside the United States, and that was the first time I'd ever traveled abroad. So, I really, you know, I remember the very first THU. Uh, very fondly. I made a lot of friends. Um, met a lot of great people. I was insanely inspired, and I'd say Portugal. And we got to see a lot more of the city, and it was really beautiful. But it's a toss-up, man, because I, I love, I love Croatia. Um, I love traveling just in general. I love, uh, I really loved Dublin. Um, but yeah, it's it's tough. I'm trying to think here. I think you hit on something really, really solid that yeah. when, when you get out and you go to face to face and and put yourself out there and meet people, great things can happen from that. I mean I, I think 
I like to say that whenever in my life, when given the, the choice to, to go or not, I have never regretted going, even if in the beginning I've been, I, you know, you can come up with a million different reasons why you, you shouldn't. Um, but if you can, if you can get yourself out there on the move and, and put yourself out there in the world, great things can happen from that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, has VR, AR tech affected your workflow? If so, how? Uh, so actually, uh, this most recent time, uh, in, in Portugal at THU, uh, I finally got to sit down and play with Oculus Medium. Mm. And, uh... I, I got to play with it for about an hour, and then I couldn't. I didn't really have time to go back and play it. But lucky for me, we there was a a uh, really fun event where they had a VR um, sculpting battle. Yes. Uh, and uh, my team won. I'm not going to try and <laughs> brag or anything, but uh, we, it, it was it was definitely stacked in our favor. And the other team had technical difficulties, and that what, sucks. Was that um, tilt brush? Uh, no, that was in Oculus Medium. It's a um, oh, sculpting. Oh, in, in yeah. Medium, yeah, cool. Yeah, and it was very, very interesting. And I think that, um, you know, I I recently just purchased the Oculus uh, mm -hmm. for myself, and I have it set up here at home. And uh, I've been playing a little bit with it, and it's super, super fun. I'm definitely going to be adding it to my workflow, uh, and I'll probably record a couple screenshots here in the near future of how that goes and how to introduce that. Nice. Yeah, we, we have a Vive right over there. Um, I love Love VR. the Vive. Yeah. I love the Vive. We have both in the office, and I and I, and I I really do love it. Yeah, there's there's so much cool stuff coming out, so much cool location-based VR, I think, that's going to come out in, in the mm. next year. Um, we were talking yesterday about Ready Player One, um, which, oh. if, you know, if you all haven't read Ready Player One, it is essentially the, the Harry Potter of virtual reality. I actually heard it on the back cover. It's... Um, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory meets the Matrix. Um, yeah, which, which yeah. I think is such a good way to put it. How could you not like that? Mm -hmm. And that that yeah. comes out. The movie Spielberg made it that Emmanuel Shu did the 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 early concepts on. Um, the that movie comes out in March, and I think that's going to be the biggest advertisement for VR to date. Oh yeah, that's going to be such a good thing. Plus, it's Spielberg at the helm. I mean. Right. He's one of my personal favorites. Uh, him and JJ, I love both their styles, um, and it's always it's always going to be interesting whenever he comes back to the helm. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just he's a, he's a magic maker. He's the dreamer. He's the original dreamer. So, well, on that note, sir, thank you very much for for your time. Um, big shout out to Learn Squared for having us here. Thank um, you, Learn Squared. Yeah, man, we could not be more pumped to be doing this with them. Um, thank you, Alex Dory, for producing this. Um, and Justin, thank you. And, and everyone on the Twitch stream, thank you. Um, the whole reason we do this is for y'all. Um, and you guys come in here, and, and day after day, many of you guys, um, we, we, we see you coming back, and, and that's, that's, that makes the whole difference for us. Um, so thank you for being part of this. Please engage with us. Um, hit up Justin on social media. Um, hit us up if you're not already. Um, engage with us. We will engage back. Um, we, we want to be in communication with you and we are so very grateful for your attention. Um, we want to bring as much value to that as we can. Um, so thanks everyone. Thank you for throwing your comments up there. Um, I'm going to read them to Justin when we get off here. Uh, thanks guys. See ya.